Anke Herman back after quite a while as you may or may not have noticed and I want to just give you a bit of a, an update and let you know what's been happening because if your sewing business is or you would like it to be the ma your main source of income then um, you might as well save yourself some some um, some hassle um, if you if you've been around for a while you'll probably know that I run a sewing business in the south of Spain and I specialize in flamenco dance costumes now there's quite a few flamenco dressmakers in the group so you know that uh, there is usually a really busy season when all the all the dance schools have end of course performances which means that everybody needs a costume and so that's what I call manic season or crazy season or, you know, I've got several names, but they all go in that same direction. And sometimes I think it's actually a luxury problem to have because it means that there's plenty of work, you know, so which is actually quite nice. But as you can probably tell in my face, like I'm tired. I've been doing this for 14 years now and... And I'm tired of crazy season. Now, the thing is, I didn't really think much about scaling my business when I first started. Like, I went out, you know, I, I didn't just start a business. I moved to a different country to make the thing a little bit more interesting. So it was such a crazy idea that it was almost like, yeah, it's fun. Let's play. Let's see what happens. But, but it wasn't really something. It was like, okay, if that hadn't worked out, well you know not such a big deal and so my focus was on let's see whether I actually can get someone to pay me for sewing and then it was whether I can get enough sewing work to actually make a living doing this and the focus was always on getting more work and I never actually looked at what I was creating for myself because I really did create the hamster wheel. And by the time I noticed, I was already running on it, right? And when I was back in sort of 2012, I noticed that I was, you know, I, I had achieved what I thought would be the, you know, be all and all of success, meaning I have a constant flow of clients and orders so I can actually, um, sustain myself uh, sewing but I really I, but then I noticed actually that means I have to be near the sewing machines all the time and also the way you know my dance costumes and the amount of work they take and and the prices I was charging it was always like okay I could really relate there was this joke going around on Facebook where they say oh you know you want the best way to make sure you never get sick be self-employed because then you can't afford to and I really I giggled because I could totally relate it was that sense like as soon as I stop pedaling everything grinds to halt and within the shortest amount of time money would become a real issue and so that's when I started, okay, what alternatives, what, what other sources of income, how can I scale it or other sources of income can I build myself up to to kind of allow myself to slow down or to jump off the hamster wheel without breaking my back, basically. And now the trouble with it is when you go, when you think that, as I did, while you're already running on the hamster wheel, it's just so much more difficult because you don't even have to, you, you know, you, you're like flat out, you don't even have the time to then work on something different, right? Say, for example, if, if, you've know, if you know me, then you, you know I've got a website called Flamenco Dressmaking. And that started out as, as, a, as a blog and I was putting tutorials and it was really basically to share the information I wish I'd found when I first started because there was just simply nothing around. And at some point I thought, oh, if I could, you know, sell some sewing patterns and online courses, then I could have 
another income stream and I wouldn't be solely dependent on, on the sewing. But when you're like flat out sewing, that takes a lot longer. And I, I and if you, if you know, if you follow the site, you know that I kind of disappear for, you know, longer periods of times when I'm busy sewing and, and doing whatever, then I just simply don't even have time to go there. So if you kind of show up sporadically, that doesn't grow into a business that, that I can now just sort of turn off the machine and, and just focus on that. You know, I sometimes think if I had more time to invest there, then I could clearly see where I would take it. But, you know, while I'm busy sewing, you know, there's just no way I can, I can build this up quickly. And so, yeah, that's, that has really turned into quite of an issue. And, and yeah, part of it, like the whole idea of becoming a coach has been a part of that as well. And so while that's been time-wise even kind of more more exhausting because, you know, spent the last two years studying and getting trained and qualified myself and I'm a, I'm a mentor on this year's coach training program. So there's a lot going on there, but, but I don't mind, you know, I really love it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm only now really in a position that I'm thinking, yeah, I'm sort of off the hook. I'm off. I'm off the, the hamster wheel, especially since I've started to, to get back into technology and offer technical help for, you know, a lot of coaches and, and uh, you know, solo service providers to set up their, you know, scheduling and payments and websites and all of those kind of technical things that really come super easy for, to me because I used to work in IT before that. And so that's now turned into something where I feel, oh, I'm off the hook. You know, like sewing is turning into fun again. And so if I could start again, you know, if I were to start this whole sewing business again now, I would, that, that it's really the one thing that I would do differently. To th I would start thinking about scaling and what business model I actually want to create right from the start and not when I'm actually already flat out and running on the hamster wheel and don't even have time to look left or right. So that's really one thing that I would change. And I think it would, if you were smarter than me and thought of a sustainable business model that can actually grow and scale as you know, your business lifts off the ground, then it would make a huge difference. You know, it would save you burnout. And and um, so, yeah, that's really one thing I wish I had done differently. Yeah, there's quite a few others, but, but uh, that's definitely something that if you plan on your sewing business to be the main source of income, I really strongly suggest and I wish I hope you think about plan B alternative sources of income you know in case you get injured you get sick whatever just think about how you can set yourself up to make sure that that doesn't become a, pro a problem and uh, so I'd really love to hear from you what what are your thoughts on it? What have you done? What are you doing? Do you have a hamster wheel or is it just me? And um, yeah, I really look forward to, to hearing from you. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.